Well, hello there, folks, and welcome back to The Whiskey Friend with me, Alan. Here we are again. We're back. It's another new week. You know what that means? It's another new video. In today's video, folks, I'm back on the, back on the battles. Uh, I've got an epic battle coming up here between two fantastic distilleries. I've got Lagavulin 8 on my left-hand side, and I've got Talisker 8 on my right-hand side. Both have been covered up by my trusty whiskey friend coins, batch two. Yeah, so yeah, I've got number 11 on the Talisker and I've got number 10 on the Lagavulin. First of all, guys, I must give props to both these uh, distilleries for putting the age statements on these. They've both got eight year old age statements, which is fantastic. The Talisker is coming in at 57.9% cast strength. It has a rum cast it's finished in pot still caribbean rum casks the lagavulin is coming in at 48 percent abv this was first released in 2016 to commemorate the 200th anniversary of lagavulin and glad to say it's now become part of the core range price wise you can pick the talisker up at 90 pounds and you can pick up the lagavulin for just under 50 pounds so both, but it's, we'll come on to the money a wee bit later on. Um, but first of all, I'm going to dive in. I'm going to nose them, taste them, see how they go punch for punch, see if they can match up, see if it's a proper head-to-head -head and they're slugging it out against each other. So, I'll start with the Lagavulin. 48%. Uh, Nothing on colour of any of these guys, but the colours are absolutely... If there's any colour in that, I'd imagine it's... It's minimal. That almost looks like a white wine, that. So, here comes the smoke. The smoke's just been released in the shed. Wow. Very, very citrus on the nose. Zesty. Vibrant. Big burst of green apple straight up front. Wow. Really, really nice. Smoke's there. Peak smoke. That bonfire smoke comes straight at you. But it's beautifully integrated with the green apple it's sweet it's honey it's sweet vanilla it's sweet honey on the nose of this one i'm picking up that that kind of road tar that bit of tarmac bit of coal wow but let's dive in and taste it down the hatch Wow, that's so easy. So easy to sip that. Here it comes. It's it's quite soft on arrival. Then after a few seconds, the, the pepper, the spice, sweet and bitter on arrival. Wow, but it's dry, it's smoky. I think it's more bonfire rather than ashy. But... As it's developing, there's a, there's a bit more balsamic, a bit more carbolic. Wow. It's dry. It's earthy. It's it's even bordering on veggie. The apples have gone now, so it's not quite as fruity, but it's the honey and the vanilla, vanilla are really, really giving it a real sweetness. It's got a little bit sticky, but it's very veggie and it's very smoky. Wow. Real, real nice. Let's dive into the finish on this one. Wow, okay. It's still... As you have that second sip... It's got a beautiful balance. Nothing's really dominating. The, 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 the fruitiness is there. It's spicy. It's smoky. Wow. Real, real nice. But as it heads to the finish, it's a long, long finish on this one. It's a warm finish. Bit of ginger spice on the end. So it's a bit spicy towards the finish. Bit dry. 
I think through the palate, it's, it's, it's lots of citrus, lots of zesty. It's a real, real, it's a real, real nice drammy sip. In fact, let me just have another sip of this just before I, I hate leaving anything in my glass with these reviews. So let's, let's finish this one off. Wow, yeah. So just to conclude on this one, it's really, really citrus on the on the nose. It's fresh, it's vibrant, it's vanilla driven, it's honey driven. The salt is in there. Spirit driven on the well, it seems that because eight year old it is pretty much spirit driven. And the palate is different on the palate. It's more balsamic. It's more carbolic. It's earthy. It's veggie. That, tarmac's there, that bonfire smoke's there, the salt's there, maybe a little bit of maritime, a little bit of coastal in there as well, and it's a long, long finish. So, guys, that's the uh, that's the old Lagavulin done. Let's take a quick sip of water, and we'll, um, we'll dive into this other bad boy and see if you can match up to this. Wow. So the Talisker, I have reviewed the Talisker two, three months ago. I did manage to pick up a bottle share in it. So I'm coming towards the end of my bottle share. Thank you very much for that, Gabriel. But I did actually go out and purchase a full one. Love the packaging at Diageo. One of these Diageo special releases. Absolutely wonderful. Um... So I will pop a little link above if you don't manage to pick up that review. But let's see how this matches up. And there's the Lagavulin again, just a typical Lagavulin bottle. Real, real nice. So, coin a living on this one. Let's see how it matches up on the nose. Wow, okay, that's again, it's really, really sweet on this one. This here again is zesty, citrus. Different with this one, this is lemon and lime. But as I think the Lagavulin is a lot of green apple. Fresh apple, crunchy apple. This is much more juicy. This is lemon, lime, but it's a juicy lemon, lemon juice. But again, it's so sweet, but there's a wee bit more maritime in this. This is a, maybe, doesn't smell like a typical Talisker when you first smell it. It's a wee bit sweeter than most Taliskers I've had before. But that coastal, that maritime comes in. Seaweed. Sea spray, sea air, all the, the kind of usuals. It is light and zesty, but here comes here comes the fruit on the nose. It's also fruity, it's confectionery. So it's got a mix of kind of, maybe a bit of tropical, that kind of pineapple, pears. But with a confectionery mix, it's like a hard sweet. So maybe some pineapple chunks, pineapple cubes. Those juicy pineapple, tinned pineapple chunks. But at the same time, it's kind of that sugary confectionery, pineapple cubes, hard boiled sweets. Maybe some pear drops in there as well. Again, you've got that sweet vanilla, sweet caramel. And the maritimes there. So this again, real, real nice on the nose. How's it match up on the palate? Colour-wise again, guys, it's almost, I think it's a little shade darker than the Lagavulin. But again, that almost looks like a, some sort of Chardonnay or some sort of white wine. Real, real nice. But nothing on any of these bottles, guys, about colouring and chill filtering and all that. If you have any tips on any of them, anybody knows any different, just give us a drop into the comments and let me know. Again, in the comments, guys, if you've tried any of these, if you've tried the, the two eights, the Lagavulin 8 and the Talisker 8, just dive into the comments let me know what your thoughts are. Have you enjoyed them? Have you not enjoyed them? Did they live up to your expectations? Let's find out how this one goes. Down the hatch. Okay. This is coming in a bit hotter. You would expect that at the cast strength. Again, it comes in soft and then it builds and builds and builds it gets peppery it's spicy it's peppery it's even bordering on maybe some chilly heat 
some hot spices. Again, there's some pear and pineapple on this, and I think this might be coming from the kind of Caribbean influence, those rum casks. There's that sweet again, it's sweet. On arrival, it's quite sweet, and then as it as a typical talister comes in, it gets a bit more salty and a bit more maritime and a bit more kind of seaweed. It's full bodied, it's smoky. Let's do a second sip of this one. On the second sip, it's a little bit less intense. It's getting drier, it's getting saltier. It's turning into more a typical talisker. On the first sip, it was originally really, really sweet from those rum casks, those Caribbean casks. But it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. The more I drink it, it's becoming more chilled, more hot sauce, hot, it's spicy. It's as spicy as hell. Spirit driven again as an eight year old, I'm pretty sure it's and at fifty I think it's fifty nine point seven or fifty seven point nine, I think not too sure. Fifty seven point nine is hot. It's definitely hotter than the lag of Ulan. That smokes there, but it's more of a distant smoke in this one as well. It's more this is more kinda of bonfire smoke, maybe a wee bit of barbecue in there, barbecued distance somebody's having a barbecue a few doors down it's that kind of smell let's see how the finish is and see how they match up just conclude on both of these sludge wow so nice i think initially when i first did these i was the, the first did the talus great i don't think i was that impressed with it as that's gone down and as I've had a few more bits of time with it, it, it is definitely getting better. It's definitely not as good as the original Talisker 8. That was, that was mind-blowing whiskey. I have done a review probably a couple of years back. I might try and pop a link to that one. I did a little review of the 8, the, the Kilcairn 8, the Talisker 8 and the Lagavulin 8 back then, two years ago. So I may try and pop a link above to that one. Well, this... Let's see it's down a little bit, is on the finish. I don't think it's a particularly long finish. I think it's more a medium finish. But it's it's hot, it's spicy, it's dry, it's salty, it's peppery. It's a real, real hot finish, but it goes quite quickly. So let's conclude on both of these and let's see how they matched up. Uh nose-wise, I think I preferred the nose of the Lagavulin. I think it was just a little bit a little bit nicer on the nose for me. The Talisker had a lot going on, that kind of sweet arrival, sweet noise. Those rum casts were kind of messing around with it a little bit. It wasn't a typical Talisker. When it came into the palette, definitely the Talisker kicked in with that bigger ABV, that cast strength. Much more, it was a wee bit more complex on the Talisker than it was on the Lagavulin. Don't get me wrong though, the Lagavulin was just a real nice, easy sipping. There was enough complexity there to keep anyone happy. Uh, but when it really came out on its own is I think the Lagavulin had a much more more much more active finish. There was just a longer finish, there was much more going on. The Talisker was much, much shorter. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with a short finish as long as it's a nice finish and it had a nice finish. Uh just it just went away a wee bit quick for me. Uh price wise, fifty pounds a bottle. Talisker's coming in at ninety pounds a bottle. So there's a big, big difference. In the money, I could almost get two lag of villains, and I think that's where I would go. Uh, I think score wise, how would I score these two? I think I would score the, the lag of villain a 90, and I think I'd score the Talisker at 89. I think the lag of villain just nicks this battle purely on the cost. The money, I could get two bottles, it's easy sipping. The Talisker, yeah, it'd be a wee bit interested and big props to Talisker and Diageo for taking a wee bit of punt because I think this was the first. The first ever kind of rum in cask that they've popped into a Talisker. Uh, yeah, guys, if you've tried them, dive into the comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, what do you prefer? Do you prefer the Lagavulin? You peat heads get involved. You should be enjoying this now because I think I've done two or three peat videos on a row now. Uh, I've just picked up the old Ardbeg Scotch as well. That may come up pretty soon. But that's pretty much for me this time, guys. I'll pop all the links to social media. Um... Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Patreon. I'll pop links in the in below if you want to buy yourself some coins as well. I've got a few left. 
I see I'll pop links into the bottom. That's me, guys. So that's another one done, another battle, another epic battle. Hope you've enjoyed the battles. Again, dive into the comments. Let me know where the battles, guys. But until the next one, I'm Alan. I'm the Whiskey Friend. And as always, the pleasure is in the sharing. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.